The Chicago Bears wanted to go to Arlington Heights, but now they want to stay in the city? We're no longer talking about the Bears leaving the city of Chicago. And the White Sox want to leave guaranteed rate? What is going on? I'm here to answer your biggest questions. The Chicago Bears. The Chicago Bears. Chicago Bears. And the Bears. Bears. The Bears. Let's start with why do the Bears want to move? Well, first, Soldier Field is really old. The Bears have been playing there for more than 50 years, and the usual lifespan of a stadium is about 30. And if you look at the NFL, the nature of the game is changing, right? You see these big stadiums like SoFi in LA, where the teams have a massive entertainment district or they have hotels and they can make a lot of money from development outside the stadium. The Bears want a piece of that, and so that's why they were looking at Arlington Heights, which was a ton of land that they could build all of that business on. Now, they're fighting over their property taxes in Arlington Heights, which has sent them back into the arms of the city. I think there's been an, a, uh, an air of inevitability to the Bears coming to Arlington Heights, and I think this puts the uh, position of the Bears in perspective, that there are two legitimate options they're considering. Now, what about the White Sox? They've been at guaranteed rate since 1991. And of course, as stadiums age, they want a new home too. White Sox chairman Jerry Reinsdorf went down to Springfield to ask state lawmakers if he could have some money to build a new stadium too. It's going to be an appropriate time for everybody to speak. A huge unanswered question is how much is this going to cost? The Bears said that they'll put $2 billion into the new stadium project along the lakefront, but we don't know how much the total project will cost. And it could be as high as three, four billion dollars. Now, that means that the taxpayer is probably going to have to come up with some money to make the whole project happen. I have not seen proof that this is a good deal for the taxpayers of the state of Illinois, but they have not presented that case yet. With the Sox, we know that Jerry Reinsdorf has asked for a billion dollars. Now, what that project will cost total, again, we don't know. Now, what about the impact on the taxpayer? While we still don't know a lot of details about what the Bears or the Sox are going to ask for and how it's going to be paid for, what we do know is that the taxpayer still owes $589 million on the renovation of Soldier Field in 2002 and $50 million on guaranteed rate. Now, that's funded by Chicago's hotel tax, which has to be used for tourism purposes, but could theoretically be used for other things. And so that sort of complicates either team's ask for any more public funding when we're still paying that off. Is it normal for taxpayers to subsidize the building of these stadiums? Well, the last time that we had a big stadium building boom was in the 90s, and there was much more public appetite for people to put up public funding to build these stadiums. Now, I think the appetite is a little bit lower now because there's so many demands on taxpayer dollars that it, I think it's going to be a really hard challenge for either team to get Springfield or Governor Pritzker to sign off on billions of dollars in subsidies for them to build new homes. Now, why aren't they just updating Soldier Field? Well, adding a dome to Soldier Field, which Mayor Lori Lightfoot did propose, I think there's a lot of creative things that we can do, would probably cost somewhere in the neighborhood of $2 billion anyway, which is basically the cost of a new stadium. Now, a big question is what happens to the current stadiums if the teams move? Well, the Bears want to stay on the lakefront. They're hoping to build a new stadium right next to Soldier Field. What they want to do is they want to turn Soldier Field into a public space with, um, you know, the original historic colonnade still up and, you know, green space and landscaping and a lot of different things to make it into a cultural attraction. Now, the White Sox, their plan is a little less clear. We're still not really sure what they plan to do, but we do know that the city still owes a ton of money on both stadiums. Now, let's talk about the timing of all of this. The Bears have had their plans for a new stadium or their, their hopes to build a new stadium in the works for years. But we just recently learned about the White Sox desire for a new home. Now, the Bears uh, have not had the chance to make a specific ask of state lawmakers. And it seems as though the White Sox have also kind of jumped on the bandwagon. Um, but what's really interesting is that state lawmakers have now told both teams that they need to work together to come up with one proposal for a specific amount of money that both teams will We'll have to share. What do they have in common? They're looking for taxpayer dollars. Now, how do the fans feel about all of this? I think whatever the Bears do will likely be the least expected thing because they tend to just screw everything up. My first reaction was it might be a ploy to get a better deal, uh, a better deal out at Arlington. I'm hoping they end up with a really good stadium <laughs> that we can, because we, Soldier Field is not great. And now it's just back and forth, nobody knows what's going on. Well, everybody's different, right? But a lot of people really are invested in the Bears staying in Chicago. There's that emotional component of playing along the lakefront, seeing the skyline. About time 
the Bears finally invest in the city of Chicago and the franchise. I don't want them to move to Arlington Heights, and I don't think they will. But some fans were really excited about the Arlington Heights move because the Bears could build this massive development and turn into a huge, really powerful franchise. Of course, we would love to be able to go down the street to a game. That would be amazing, but I think the right financial things need to be in place. I've called it a silent majority of folks in Arlington Heights who want the Bears to come here, and now's the time for those people to start rallying and uh, put some pressure on our municipal groups and our community to get this thing done. It means tax dollars, support for our schools, support for our charities, jobs, opportunities for the community, and we can't lose sight of the fact that a mile from our downtown, we'd have an opportunity to see an NFL team play to see concerts. How about the mayor of Chicago? Is he on board with the Bears plan? Here's the good news that we're only talking about Chicago right now. That's the good news, right? So whether it's what the Bears have put forward or what the Friends of the Park are suggesting, we're no longer talking about the Bears leaving the city of Chicago. And I've worked hard, quite frankly, over the first 10 months in office to build the relationship with President Kevin Warren and the Bears organization. What's really interesting is that the Bears had a pretty rough relationship with his predecessor, Mayor Lori Lightfoot. And if they want to have a productive conversation, they got to come to the table. Um, the Park District basically ignored a lot of the Bears' requests to update Soldier Field or put a sports book at Soldier Field, which would have been a huge revenue source for them. To, to express what my commitment is and what I've always said is that you have to have public benefit, that any private investment um, has to be tethered to public benefit and that these partnerships have the potential and the power um, to yield tremendous outcomes for communities and what I'm encouraged by is that the Bears and the organization they agree with my administration and my vision and that's that's encouraging news it also tells you that the economic and cultural vitality of the city of Chicago is strong. Well, once Mayor Johnson was elected last year um, and Kevin Warren took over as president of the Bears, the relationship really changed and the two of them forged this bond and promised this open communication that has led us to the point that we are today. I appreciate the leadership of Kevin Warren. He's done an outstanding job. Our team remains engaged. You know, as far as the next steps or, you know, what will be the ultimate motivation for my administration to sign off on this is again to make sure that there's complete um, benefit and public use. So what's the timing on all of this? Well, it's important to know that the Sox lease at guaranteed rate ends in 2029 and the Bears lease ends in 2032. Now, these developments take a really long time and we still don't have a lot of details and we need to bring a lot of stakeholders to the table in order for any of these projects to get done. So it's gonna be a really long time before we see any shovels to the ground. So I hope that answered some of your questions. To learn more, stick with NBC Chicago.